Hello and welcome to today's WorkSafe Month webinar, Sun Smart in the Workplace. I'm Stephanie Murawski from WorkSafe Tasmania and I will be your moderator. Before we start, please take a moment to read the following slide about information received today. I'll now go over housekeeping. Here is a screenshot of the attendee control panel. You should see something that looks like this on the right hand of your screen. You're likely listening in using your computer's speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. Webcams and my audience microphones will not be used in today's webinar. Questions will be taken throughout the presentation. Please use the window on your control panel to type and submit your questions. Finally, today's webinar is being recorded. I would now like to introduce your presenter, Ella French, Cancer Prevention Team Leader at Cancer Council Tasmania. As the Prevention Team Leader, Ella delivers education on key messages and coordinates the SunSmart program. Ella has worked at Cancer Council Tasmania for five years. She is passionate about community health, well-being, and has extensive experience in engaging the community to achieve positive health outcomes. Welcome, Ella. Thanks, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. As Stephanie said, my name is Ella, and I'm here to talk today about being some smart. So just a few points before we begin, um, because unfortunately we know that cancer impacts a lot of people. I just wanted to acknowledge that there may be some of you listening today who have been directly or indirectly affected by cancer. So if today's presentation raises any concerns or issues for you, please look after yourself. And if you need, take a break and return when you're ready. We do have cancer support services available and I'll have a number at the end of the slide for you to be able to call if you need. We don't give out individual clinical or medical advice, so I won't be talking in detail about that, but we do encourage seeing your doctor. So our mission is to reduce the impact and incidence of cancer on all Tasmanians. So we do this by providing high quality support services for people affected by cancer, and that may be people who are either directly or indirectly affected by cancer. We invest in cancer prevention programs that educate the community about lifestyle factors that can decrease the risk of cancer. And this is my role. So it's around educating and creating awareness around how you can prevent cancer. And last, but definitely not least, we fund local cancer research projects and provide a respected voice for people affected by cancer. So we are more than 90% funded through the community from support of our events that some of that you may have heard of, such as Relay for Life, Australia's Biggest Morning Tea, Daffodil Day, our balls, breakfasts, community fundraisers and donations and bequests. And all the money that is raised in Tasmania stays here in Tasmania. So unfortunately, more than nine Tasmanians are diagnosed with cancer every day. There are around two thirds of cancers that we don't know the causes of. However, we do know that around one third of cancers can be prevented through healthy lifestyle choices. A healthy lifestyle is also important in helping to prevent a reoccurrence of cancer. It can also help reduce the risk of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type two diabetes, heart disease and stroke. The good news is that the five year survival rate has greatly increased for all cancers combined and is now around 70% compared to around 45% 30 years ago. The survival rate is higher for some of the more common cancers in Tasmania. Oops, sorry. So as I mentioned, around a third of cancers can be prevented and these are the seven things you can do to reduce your cancer risk. Today, as you're aware, we're focusing on being sun smart, specifically in the workplace. So Australia has one of the highest rates of skin cancer in the world. Two in three Australians will be diagnosed with skin cancer by the age of 70. Melanoma is the fourth most common cancer for both Tasmanian men and women. A majority of skin cancers are caused by UV radiation from the sun. 
So why do we want to be sun smart? Well, we know that skin cancer is highly preventable. The main cause of skin cancer, as I mentioned, is UV radiation from the sun. And we do know that exposure during childhood and adolescence greatly increases the chance of developing skin cancer later on in life. We also know that cumulative exposure, so exposure that adds up over time, and the number of severe sunburns increases the risk of skin cancer as well. Basically, UV all adds up. Very few cases of melanoma are due to inherited genes. Majority of the visible signs of ageing are the result of damage to the skin as well, so premature wrinkling and ageing of the skin. The more time you spend unprotected in the sun, the greater your risk of skin cancer. Prolonged exposure to UV can have serious consequences for the eyes as well, and cataracts are the most common types of this eye damage. So as you can see on the screen here, there are two pictures. Um, the picture on the left is of a truck driver, and he was a truck driver in America for around 15 years. And he had the sun mainly exposed to the left side of his face. And as you can see, that side of his face is much more wrinkled and damaged than the right side of his face. And it just shows that sometimes it's not just exposure when you're directly in the sun, but also indirectly in places like cars. So not all skin cancers are the same. And we have three main types of skin cancer, some of which you may have heard of. And these are just examples, these pictures of the screen of different types of skin cancer, but just so you're aware that not all skin cancers look the same and they can vary for different cases. So basal cell carcinoma um, doesn't usually spread to other parts of the body. Um, it usually occurs in the head, neck um, sort of area. Um, for squamous cell carcinoma, it's most commonly in places that are exposed to the sun. So again, to the face, head, neck area, um, on hands, arms and legs as well. It potentially could spread if left untreated. Now, melanoma is actually the least common skin cancer of all. And it's around 1% to 2% of all skin cancers combined. Um, but if recognised and treated early, it is almost always curable, um, but potentially, if not, um, then it can potentially spread to other parts of the body. But something like more than 90% of, or I think it's even 95% of all skin cancers, including melanomas, can be successfully treated. It's just around finding them early. So as I mentioned, UV radiation is the main cause of skin cancer, um, and it's a type of radiation that's produced by the sun. Um, we don't have to worry about other artificial sources so much now. Um, solariums were a big contributor to skin cancers, but they've now been banned Australia-wide. So the World Health Organization created this global solar UV index, as you can see on the screen, and it shows UV from a level of low of one to extreme 11 plus. So we recommend that outdoor workers use sun protection all year round, regardless of UV. For the general population, we recommend the use of sun protection whenever UV levels are three and above. So in that yellow section there, unless you're with sort of outdoors or near highly reflective surfaces, such as snow, um, or you're gonna be outside for extended periods. Um, but for outdoor workers, uh, you would do require some protection all year round for the general population when the UV is serene above. So the UV actually can't be seen or felt. It's not like the sun's light that we can see or the sun's warmth that we can feel. So because we can't sense UV, we won't know that it's damaged our skin until potentially it's too late. And you may have said this yourself or heard other people say, I can feel myself getting burnt, but you actually can't feel yourself getting burnt. You can just feel the UV. So you can feel the heat from the sun. But there are ways that you can know when it's important to protect yourself. Like I said, for outdoor workers, it's all year round. But if you're not an outdoor worker, then the SunSmart app um, is free to download and it is a great way that shows you what the UV levels are. And just to talk a little bit about UV, we're just going to play a video now called UV It All Adds Up.
You spend more time in the sun than you think. Anywhere you go, UV from the sun will damage unprotected skin. And it just keeps adding up. The more time you spend unprotected in the sun, the greater the risk of cancer. And you'll never know when your number is up. I think that message is, and that video is quite a powerful one and sort of highlights the points around cumulative damage, but also incidental exposure. And as I mentioned, um, you know, we recommend using sun protection when the UV is three and above, but it's important to know when the UV is three and above and when to use that. And SunSmart app is one of those ways, as well as you can also access from the newspaper in the weather section. Um, but if you are an outdoor worker, it is important that you use sun protection all year round. So there are different factors that affect UV. So time of day, so UV levels are greatest when the sun is highest in the sky. This usually occurs during the middle of the day. So this is in particular when care needs to be taken against UV. Time of year. So in Tasmania, that the average UV levels are three and above from the beginning of September through to the end of April. So for the general population from the beginning of September through to the end of April is when sun protection is needed. If you're an outdoor worker, that's when particular care needs to be taken as well. Cloud cover, so on lightly overcast days, UV levels can be similar to that of a cloudy day. However, heavy cloud does reduce UV level. Um, some ground and building surfaces do reflect UV. So consider that when you're outdoors and, and working that some surfaces can reflect. So um, in particular, soft and rough surfaces reflect less UV than hard, smooth surfaces. So if you're near a light coloured, hard, smooth surface, just be aware that it might be reflecting more UV and to make sure that you are adequately, adequately protected. And proximity to the equator is another factor. So the closer you are to the equator, the higher UV levels are. And we are at risk here in Australia because we are quite close to the sun um, in comparison to places such as Europe and North America. So these are the main factors that do affect UV. Um, in particular, consider the time of day and, and the time of year. But I think cloud cover is one that people aren't aware of. So just because it's not a hot, sunny day um, that you still need to be wearing sun protection. And this graph just reiterates that a little bit more. So on an overcast day, you can have the same or even more UV levels than a warm and sunny day. And another myth is actually around that if it's windy um, and you get a potentially a red face and people talk about windburn, it's actually sunburn. There's no such thing as windburn. And you can think about that if you're sitting in front of a fan, for example, you don't get burnt. But when you're outdoors, you do. And it's because it's actually sunburn, not windburn. So separate your thoughts around temperature and UV. Just because it's hot um, and cold, then it can be the same. So everyone can just have a bit of a stand up and stretch just to um, have a bit of a break and then we're about halfway through the webinar and we'll go on to the next lot of slides. Hopefully had a little bit of a stretch there. Um, so outdoor workers in Australia receive three times more sun exposure than indoor workers. So it does place you at a greater risk of skin cancer and skin damage if you're an outdoor worker. Outdoor workers' risk of squamous cell carcinoma is nearly double that of indoor workers. In Australia, it is estimated that around 200 melanomas and 34,000 non-melanoma skin cancers per year are due to occupational exposure to UV. It's not just because of direct sun, but also via reflection and scattering of UV, which I mentioned just before. So just think about the surfaces that are around you and not just if you're into the direct sun. We're just going to play another video now um, called Ron's Story. Around about 2012, when I was down the beach, I noticed that 
this mole in particular was just getting a little bit bigger and started to, to change a little bit. Unfortunately, you get busy, family, work, all those sort of things, and um, you tend to put things off, which is not a good thing. Melanoma is such a varying thing that my stage went from stage two straight to stage, stage four. It transgressed pretty quickly um, to, my, to my lung, um, and so therefore it became pretty serious. I've always been one to wear sunscreen anyway, um, but I guess in my situation with my history is that I was outside a lot, especially in my youth. I was outdoors the whole time. I was surfing, I was playing tennis, I was playing cricket, um, and I was working outdoors. So there's seven days a week that I was outdoors. I've changed um, some of my clothing and uniform, and if I need to use a sunscreen, well then I do. But if I can use a long sleeve shirt that's, that's breathable and able to wear, you know, even in a sunny, hot, warm day like today, then uh, that, that's much better. The message to my colleagues was, yep, it can happen to you, it's happened to me. Uh, I've worked in this industry, you're working in this industry. The risks are high because of, of what we have to do to complete our work. Start doing these things. The, the company itself gives you sunscreen, it's giving you a hat, um, but you need to take it on your onus yourself to, to make sure that you're doing the right thing. They said to me later on, oh, you look normal, you look fantastic. I said, yeah, I said, that's, that's melanoma. It, it's, a, it's a black cancer. It hides and it sits there and then whammo, it gets you. Skin cancer can happen to you. You need to make, start making those changes now to minimise those risks um, and start changing your attitude a little bit now, um, or a lot now, <laughs> um, so that you don't develop those problems later on in life. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that video. Um, so UV is a work health and safety issue. And if you think about it, would you wear thongs to work or weld without a mask? Well, working outside without sun protection when the UV is serene above is a health and safety risk as well. UV is not too different from other health and safety issues. The main difference is that most workplace injuries are immediate, but UV tends to cause a disease to develop over time. Using sun protection to avoid UV radiation is like using protective gear to avoid asbestos. It can also cause cancer later in life. Under the Work Health and Safety Act, both employers and employees have a duty of care to reduce the risk of all types of injury and disease in the workplace, including sun protection. Employers are responsible for protective equipment, safe plant and systems of work, and providing adequate information, instruction, training and supervision. Employees are responsible for cooperating with their employers, complying with instructions and not engaging in risk-taking behaviour. So it's really a responsibility of everyone. This UV Daily website is a great website for employees to find out a variety of sun protection information. So if you get a chance, check it out. Um, there's some really great information and videos. So how do we protect ourselves from UV? Well, hopefully you know about the five sun protection measures, um, but I will go through them individually now. You might remember our mate Sid the Seagull and Slip Slop Slap Sea Can Slide. So we want to slip on clothing that covers as much skin as possible. So not all clothing fabric is equal. So look for a swing tag if possible that has a high ultraviolet protection factor or UPF rating to be sure. The UPF rating does provide information on how much UV will pass through um, that is unstretched dry material. Any fabric rated UPF 15 plus provides good protection, but UPF, UPF 50 plus is recommended. Um, and it reflect, sorry, it provides protection by absorbing and reflecting UV that strikes the surface of the fabric. 
So think of colours. Um, darker colours tend to make you hot, but dark colours of the same fabric type will actually absorb more UV than light pastel shades. So think about clothing, make sure clothing has at least covering your shoulders, at least has a collar. Think about long sleeves as possible and long pants as possible. Of course, we're practical, um, but basically you just want to be covering yourself with as much as possible with clothing. The next one is hats. Um, so have a think about the type of hat you're wearing at the moment, um, especially if you're an outdoor worker and if it's actually providing you with good protection. So we want to use some protect, uh, sorry, hats that protect your face, neck and ears. So we don't recommend caps um, because they don't protect your neck and your ears. Um, so broad brimmed hats with sort of roughly seven and a half centimetres or a bucket hat with around six centimetres. Um, if you wear hard hats, then try and get an attachment that can sit at the back um, that can protect your neck. It's just so important because, as I mentioned earlier, that majority of skin cancers happen on your face, head and neck area. So it's really important to protect your face, head and neck area with a really good hat. So have a bit of a think about the types of hats you're wearing. If you're not an outdoor worker, then think about the types you can use when you go outside. So some, uh, sunglasses are really important and a really important sun protection measure, as I mentioned, that um, particularly for cataracts and other eye damage and skin cancers that can happen. So you want ones that are sort of close fitting, um, they're wraparound and polarised if possible. Um, you can get ones that sit over top of safety glasses as well if you need those. Um, so that's really important sun protection measure. So seeking shade is great because shade is a really practical, um, sort of user-friendly form of sun protection. And well-designed and positioned shade can significantly reduce UV exposure. Um, and as you know, especially in summer when it's really hot, it will create quite a nice, cool, comfortable space. Um, obviously, it's not always going to be the case. You can't always guarantee that there's going to be shade somewhere, but um, you can have portable shade with you. Um, even trying to think about potentially taking breaks in the shade, um, even rotating jobs so you're out of um, the UV where possible. So just think about ways you can incorporate shade in your day. Um, if you're an outdoor worker, it, it's obviously quite hard to be in the shade all the time, but think about how you can potentially take at least taking breaks in the shade. Um, trying to avoid having shade places um, near water or really highly reflective surfaces. Um, but shade is a really great way as another sun protection tool. So the last of the five is sunscreen. And I can bet that probably most of you aren't applying enough sunscreen. Um, it's something that I think people tend to forget to reapply them. So we do re recommend applying sunscreen at least 20 minutes before going outdoors. Um, and if you know, especially if you know that the UV is going to be three and above for the day, just apply it in the morning as a part of your daily morning routine. But at least 20 minutes before going outdoors. Um, it's really important that it's a 30 plus or 50 plus sunscreen. Um, it's actually not too big of a difference between 30 plus and 50 plus, either is fine. Um, just need it to be water resistant or broad spectrum. You can get quite a good dry touch sunscreen so that dirt and things doesn't stick to it, which is quite good. Um, but basically just find a sunscreen that works well for you. There's ones for sensitive skin um, and all different skin types. So applying sunscreen 20 minutes before going outdoors and remembering to reapply every two hours. So how can you you know, remind yourself to apply more sunscreen. Can you have a reminder on your phone? Can you put it somewhere really accessible so you remember to reapply? And basically we've left um, this sun protection measure to last because we really only want to use sunscreen on areas that aren't covered by clothing and hats. So if you are heavily sweating um, or towel drying, make sure that you apply sunscreen more often because um, sweating does make sunscreen rub off. But pretty much just apply around one teaspoon per limb if you have your limbs exposed. Um, otherwise, just as much as you can. And just remember to reapply every two hours. So think about how you can start to reapply and incorporate sunscreen more into your day. So just want to touch on uh, early detection just to sort of finish off the presentation. And although prevention is ideal and I've talked through the five sun protection measures, 
As I mentioned earlier, majority of skin cancers can be successfully treated if found early. So it's really important to become familiar with your skin. You need to get to know your body and what is normal for you so any changes can be quickly noticed. It's crucial to check all of your skin, not just sun exposed areas. Um, Bob Marley, for example, had a melanoma under his big toe. So you need to be checking all areas, you know, under your armpits, um, in between your legs and your feet, all areas. Don't just rely on an annual skin check to detect any suspicious spots. It's important that you self check. So you need to look for any change in shape, size or colour of a spot or the development of a new spot. And if you notice any of these, and you can see this on the slide, I think this Check the Signs is a really great resource. And we have plenty of these bookmarks available if you would like, and you can get in contact about that. So if any of these changes have occurred, then please visit your doctor. So when was the last time you checked your skin? And when was the last time you went to the doctor to get checked? So to check your body, make sure you stand in a spot with good light. Um, you can use a larger mirror and a smaller handheld mirror to check your back. And don't forget to check everywhere. As I mentioned, ask a family or friend to check any areas that you're sort of unsure about or can't get to. And use a comb to go through your hair to feel for any lumps or bumps. So just make sure you're really aware of what your skin looks and feels like, and then you can detect any unusual spots early. So I'm just going to play a video on tips to prepare for a skin check if you're interested in getting your skin checked. Getting your kit off in front of your doctor can be a little bit intimidating, but it's important that you let your doctor examine your whole body because skin cancer can appear anywhere. When you're booking the appointment, let your receptionist know that you're after a full body skin exam. It means you'll get the time that you need. This is not the time for layers, people. Choose clothes that are easy to get on and off. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, get your doctor to check your upper half first and then your lower half, just so you don't have to stand there in your birthday suit too long. Unless you're a nudist, in which case it's time to party. <laughs> oh yeah! If you have a spot that your doctor is concerned about, they might refer you to a specialist like a dermatologist or a surgeon. Ask your doctor what to expect and don't be afraid to ask for a second opinion if you're still unsure. The best way to monitor them is to take photos of them, put them on Instagram, give them their own hashtag, put a Valencia filter on them and if you see any changes in your spots, Go and consult your doctor. So I think that video is just kind of a nice lighthearted way of showing the different things you should do before getting, getting your skin checked. Um, so you can do it as an annual or six month check, but make sure you are checking your own skin. So just to remember that it's really important to use the five sun protection measures as much as possible to protect against UV um, and check your skin regularly and go to your doctor if you notice anything that's unusual for you. Thank you. And does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Ella. So if anyone does have any questions uh, for Ella in regards to being sun smart in the workplace, please type and submit your questions into the questions window on your control panel. And if anyone wants to ask anything, you know, in regards to Cancer Council or anything in the presentation, um, don't be afraid to ask. And if you would like any information or resources, we have brochures available on sun protection in the workplace and being sun smart generally and the Check Your Spots bookmarks. So, um, yeah, my email or our prevention email is probably easier one. So prevention at cancertaz.org.au or you can pop in the chat and I can um, get in contact with you directly or through Stephanie to email some resources. Thanks, Ella. Uh, a question that has come through, UPF clothing, where are the best places to look for it? Um, that's a really good question. And most workwear stores, especially for outdoor worker gear, should have a UPF rating and swing tag on them. Um, otherwise, if 
it's not for outdoor workers. Um, basically just looking at any sort of general stores, um, we do have some clothing on our Cancer Council shop online. Um, Otherwise, yeah, most workwear stores should have a UPF swing tag. Um, otherwise, if you don't come across anything with the UPF swing tag, basically just something that has sort of close woven fabric um, and in particular, yeah, the darker colours are, are good as well. But yeah, most of them through your general workwear stores um, should have UPF tags. Thanks, Ella. Another question, if my cosmetics contain sunscreen, do I still need to um, use a, an, another, another sort of sunscreen? Uh, that's a really good question and it depends on the SPF of your sunscreen, so of, of your um, face cream, sorry. So if it's below an SPF 30 plus, then it would be good to apply sunscreen as well. Um, just be aware that you then also will need to reapply during the day um, if you're going out outdoors for extended periods. If you're not going outdoors sort of throughout the day as much, then, then the once off is okay. But um, yeah, just, just check what the SPF is on the moisturiser or the, or the cream. Um, and if it's less than 30 plus, then I would put on sunscreen as well. All right, thanks, Ella. There's still time to submit questions uh, for today's presenter, Ayala French from Cancer Council Tasmania. So please submit those questions via your, your questions window on your control panel. So a question, Ella, how does running and sweating impact sunscreen effectiveness? Yeah, so sweating, if you're heavily sweating, um, as in sweating sort of that's, that's dripping um, and that you're then rubbing your face, then you're rubbing the sunscreen off. Um, so if you are someone that does, um, if you're exercising quite intensely or working hard and you are sweating and then rubbing it off, then you are rubbing off the sunscreen. Um, so you can get particular types of sunscreen that are more um, sweat resistant than others. Um, and obviously I think our cancer, cancer sunscreens are quite good and we have particular sweat ones there, but any brand, um, if you look for particular brands, will have more sweat resistant. Um, so, you know, in regards to running, um, then it would be recommended particularly to make sure you have a hat on um, and wearing sort of protective gear that's obviously, you know, practical in terms that you'll be getting quite warm. Um, but just be aware that, yeah, if you are sweating and rubbing and wiping the sweat off your face that you will be rubbing off the sunscreen. But, yeah, try and look for the sweat resistant ones. Um, the, work, the sports sunscreen, um, a lot of brands do have a sports sunscreen and they are water and sweat resistant. So they will tend to stay on your face for longer. But if you are sweating and rubbing it off, yeah, then you will rub the sunscreen off. So just be aware of that. All right, thanks, Ella. Uh, another question, uh, will I become vitamin D deficient if I use sun protection? No worries. So. As, in a, as a general rule, um, no, sun protection doesn't impact vitamin D um, because people often don't apply enough sunscreen um, and tend to overexpose themselves to the sun. Um, if you are worried about vitamin D levels, um, we don't recommend spending extra time in the sun, but we do recommend talking to your doctor and just getting your um, vitamin D levels tested. Um, and then if, if needed, then supplementation, but we don't recommend sort of spending extra time in the sun. And as a general rule, no, sun protection shouldn't impact your vitamin D. Um, if you're not an outdoor worker, then sort of the rule of thumb is if it's below three, um, basically it's your time to get vitamin D, but if the UV is three and above, then some protection is needed. All right, thanks Ella. There's still time to submit any questions that you have for today's presenter, Ella French from Cancer Council Tasmania. Please submit your questions via the questions window on your control panel. Uh, question, Ella, is there a difference between going to my doctor to get 
a, um, a, a mole checked as opposed to going to a skin cancer clinic? Mm, that's a good question. So we recommend going to uh, your doctor because they have your medical history there. Um, they are a lot cheaper than going to a skin specialist. Um, but if you're not sure if your own doctor does do skin checks, it's worthwhile calling up the practice and just asking, look, I would like to book in for a skin check. Does my doctor do it or does someone else there do? Um, but and then of course you can go to a skin specialist to get checked as well. Um, just have to be aware that the price um, it varies between sort of eighty and one hundred and twenty or so dollars. Um, so just be aware of that um, when booking into a skin clinic. Um, so we do recommend going to your GP as your first point of call, just because yeah they have your history. Generally cheaper, and and majority of doctors do do skin checks. But yes, yeah, you definitely can go to a skin clinic as well um, to get checked. And often people will do an annual skin check or something like that through the clinic. But yeah, just be aware of the cost, and when you're calling up, just making sure that um you know who you're seeing and and that they're an approved practice. All right, thanks, Ella. Just a final question that's come through before we close today's uh, webinar. How can I get the SunSmart app that you referred to? Yeah, so just downloading from um, the App Store or um, I can't, I can't remember, sorry, what the non-iPhone user app, the, where you can download apps from, what's that called? But basically you just download from your app store on your phone and just type in SunSmart and download the SunSmart app. Um, it's free to download and it is really good because it will tell you what the sun protection times are for the day, what the current UV level is and what the maximum UV is for the day. So it's a really, really great app. Um, it's got about 200 locations in Tasmania that you can look from. So you just set your location to wherever you are. And yeah, it's really useful. So you can just download it from, from the App Store or, or whatever the equivalent is um, for smartphones. So yeah, it's simple and, it, and it's free to download. All right, thank you, Ella. So thank you, Ella French, Kat from that's right. So thank you, Ella French, Cancer Council uh, Prevention Team Leader. And thank you everyone for attending today's webinar, SunSmart in the Workplace. Once you do leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation. We do appreciate you providing us with your feedback. Today's webinar has also been recorded and will be available on WorkSafe's YouTube channel. On behalf of WorkSafe Tasmania and the WorkCover Tasmania Board, thank you for joining us and thank you, Ella. Thank you.